Twitch, YouTube, and Steam are go. Just a couple minutes, guys, and we'll get started. About two minutes. found. When I saw it, it felt like that was still me in there. Your DNA scan showed that you're a military clone pilot. No wonder you bettered my predecessor. What if I broadcast your profile? You may not like who will come looking for me. Hundreds of loose cannons like you roaming the region and causing problems. Something had to be done about it. something of great value in the DMZ. One big, easy job. You need my ticket out of here, and yours too. Your authority, your treaties, your lies, and your filthy presence have no place here. They call themselves Okar Prime. Any opportunity to trigger a new war would suit their purposes perfectly. It is time to be clear about your allegiances. We can leave you in peace. Or, I can put you and your companions on a high-priority eliminate list. Which will it be? You don't understand what's at stake. So, are you in? I'm still trying to figure you out, Adam. It's clear you're running from something. I can't help what I am. All I cared about the Star Wars was getting out of the DMZ. There's no going back now. Things are looking up, Hive. I think I see light at the end of the tunnel. So soon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Game stream. I am your host, your guide, your servant, your community ambassador, Eric Schrader, for going all the way into all the little details of Everspace 2. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a delightful little stream today just to kind of go over those specific details. We're going to be putting a lot of emphasis on continuing our story, which looks nothing like this, but I wanted to show this because this is a build that I made last week that I forgot to show you. Just a couple more of anything that, you know, you can customize. And uh, <clears throat> I figured that this was an important one. This is also based off of a skin from Everspace One, by the way. So while I'm giving you like a heads up as to 
what we're gonna be doing. I'll just kind of fly this forward and reveal this very beautiful engine trail. Oh my gosh, I, I quite like this one, in fact. Quite like the way it comes together, personally. Hmm. So, but yeah. <clears throat> blood star signatures in the vicinity. So for all of those of you who missed the stream last week, we revealed a lot of new little details per the customization, including, but not limited to, the window tents and the engine trails. So you will be able to customize this at full release and maybe some more. So <laughs> things are looking pretty clean. Things are looking pretty good. We are very much enjoying the way everything's coming together. <clears throat> we have a lot of story that we're going to be plowing through today. In addition to screenshots from our contest, we have a contest winner. Yay. They'll get the bragging rights within our Discord. We'll start another community contest at the end of the stream. And we're also going to be showing a number of little details that have been updated. Uh, primarily the codex, which I can now officially confirm we're actually going to bring that to fruition. It's it's happening. We, it's, it's coming full force. All right. Full force. It's going to happen. So let's go ahead, uh, jump over to our save, our main mission save. And because this is in a really good spot to kind of show you just how the codex is developing, we're going to start with that from the get-go. That's going to be number numero uno. We're diving in first. So let's head on over to the data tab. And, uh, and to do that, we're going to push E because I know you guys really want me to push E. And I also just want to point out just a little bit more smoothness going on. Just, you know, just, just little, little details that maybe those UX designers out there are going, oh, that's nice. Just, you know, just a little bit of, just a little bit of something, something. All right, so this is the codex that we are, we've like finalized uh, all of the spaces for your informational delight, especially your, you lore junkies out there who just wanna know more about the world. So obviously we have the story so far, this picks up exactly where you have been in your particular save. And uh, so when you're starting your new saves, of course, it'll be completely blank. You'll start with this taken hostage, gives you the details of, of all of that stuff and it goes forward from here. Now, you guys got this in the latest update, but the imagery wasn't done, and there's probably some more tweaks and whatnot to, to go, but um, you can see that it gives you everything that you need to know to catch up to speed. So if like you play the game for a couple weeks and then there's like another hot new release for a game or whatever, and you play it for a week and then you realize it's not as good as ours, so you come back to it, now you have this means to recap very quickly to get you right back into it, right? Really delightful. Eric, can I just dive in? Just one second. Your oh, yeah, green sure. screen's not all the way up to the top and everybody's noticed. <laughs> Actually, I think my camera's bumped, but uh, that's great. <laughs> thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for, like, looking out for, you know, the stream and the, the details thereof. Excellent. It's beautiful. Yeah, actually, that makes sense because I was adjusting my lighting, so uh, I probably bumped the camera. My apologies. But thank you so much for everybody who's like shouting green screen. Oh my gosh, you're not kidding. It was, wow, it was uh, pretty intense. You guys are amazing. You're on it. But I want to tell you about stuff. <laughs> so thanks. Thanks again. Thanks again. So uh, we also have these character tabs where whenever you first meet a character, it will then add it in to this setting to give you the name, the birth, the current whereabouts, as well as description of that particular character. So for example, we have Marie DeVent here. Um, I said Marie de Vint. It's Marie de Wint, but it, what's the proper pronunciation, actually? That's a good question. That's a good question. I'd go de Vint. I'd yeah, go with a V. I, yeah. I, I think I would go with de Vint as well, but still. <clears throat> but regardless, you get all these this beautiful information about all these different characters, as well as a uh, picture on the right side. So you have your other characters that you've met along the way. Like, for example, Ben, of course. Nice, delightful artwork. Which, um, and I should say real quick, the artwork for all of these characters is not 100% finalized. There's still some modifications coming to some of them. And there's, you know, still possible adjustments to some of this language. So if you're seeing any of this and then you see that it like changes from now to full release, that, yeah, I mean, we're, we're still in development, guys. 
So, but yeah, there's there's lots of uh, additional information here on these characters that you see directly handed over to you from the station AI and from what uh, Hive has access to on his limited Aeterna network uh, without being connected to it, right? So you're getting all of them plugged in here. We'll go to Adam Ross on as well. It's There's a nice little description here. You could screen capture that. You can read it if you want. Uh, I also see a typo. Oh, <laughs> we'll get that fixed. Don't worry about that. But as you can see, we wanted to be incredibly thorough with these characters, especially for those who want to find those connections between Everspace 1 and 2. There's going to be some of those specific tie-ins and references. And also just solid information on just getting to know these characters a bit more. So we're going to go back. Look at that. All right. Now we can head on over to the world. We also have this, where we have lots of locations. And these are divided into different categories. So, for example, the banners that you see on the left, these are your factions. Then you see these sort of like stars above a planet. These are your locations. Then you have just very contextual elements all the way down here, indicating various things that you discover or find or just need more description of. So, uh, as an example, you know, we got the Bloodstar base in the background, um, description of Bloodstar, which is very similar, if not, well, no, I think this is. Uh, it's, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of information to put together based on what you discover and where you're at in the game. Uh, we have the Colonial Fleet here, of course. Lots and lots and lots of context for where things originated from, how things have moved forward, just to have that added knowledge, especially if you're new to Everspace 2 and you're not really sure... Uh, where that context should lie. Now you can dive in here and get that information. It's no longer something that's ab above you or beyond you. It can be very easily accessed. We also have all the ships here too with just some added detail and a nice little piece of concept art, which of course I'm blocking. So each ship has uh, those descriptions. Looks pretty nice, I think. So lots of information that you can pull out of here. And there's also the details that whenever you're first entering into the game, you're getting that little bit of information, like even on beanies, for example, just like a simple beanies right out of the start of the gate. And so you can see there's a specific number of elements from the world that you will acquire through the game. Uh, as far as I'm aware, these aren't, <clears throat> these aren't, um, like, hidden away in certain, like, corners of space. If you're just pursuing the main missions, you're going to fill this out. You're gonna get, like, at least 99% of it. There might be, like, one or two things that you can only get if you do a specific task. But for the most part, this isn't something that we want to, like, challenge you in acquiring. It's just that added flavor, that world building so that you understand where things are coming from and how it all kind of ties together. Also, I really dig this paint color. Oh my gosh. Uva, can we please, can we please make a brown color happen? It would make me so happy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff here. I feel like I'm showing each one of these and all of you guys are, are like eyeing every single one. You're looking for a typo and being like, oh, I see one. I see one. I'm going to catch it. It's, it's fine. It's great. You can do that. It's still going through that process. In fact, it's been through that process a number of times, uh, <clears throat> but uh, it's pretty well scrubbed. But of course, still have to give you that work in progress disclaimer. There's uh, still a bit more coming but we're pretty pretty happy with how this has all come together thus far i'm a big fan of the concept art here for fort cetus did i bump the camera oh no
There we go. If the camera moves anymore, it's uh, it's because of my cat. Spoilers, I don't own a cat. Stay, all right. Flawless. What could possibly go wrong in the middle of a live stream, am I right? All right, perfect. But yeah. Overall, as you explore the new systems, this will open up as well, new systems and new locations to give you more details. Oh yeah, Rodeo Station, the, the, uh, the home base. This is also a nice one to see. Lots of information. The camera's mounted on top of my monitor in a somewhat precarious position, but it should be fine for all intents and purposes. I guess if it just falls off, you'll know, because uh, everything will go crazy, and then we'll fix it, and we'll keep going on the stream. But yeah, really happy with the the way that the, co the codex has been coming across. I also showed this already. This is just very basic guides and tutorials, but just because we're on the topic of the codex, this time around with Everspace 2, we wanted to bring back every single one of those tooltips that you see as you're playing through the game. So anytime, anytime you see a tooltip pop up and it's like, hey, this is important information that you're first getting introduced to and you close it or like you accidentally close it even, I have definitely done that when I've been gaming before. Um, now you can go to the, the guides and tutorials tab and all of the stuff that you've clicked through, be it by accident or otherwise, you can now go back in and read all about it, as well as the conjoining photo for when it first appeared. Uh, there's not information on Atheon in this particular codex. Not at this time. Not at this time. 23 out of 51, and that's probably because of where we're at in our missions. But uh, I love the question. All right, so speaking of missions and story and moving forward, I think that's what the next step of this particular uh, campaign will be and as we're going through that you'll also kind of see how the unlocks for the codex work and it should be nice and delightful we're also going to see if we can get this container that's got some weirdness in the job don't worry about that too much we're gonna try and bring that back i think last time we really struggled doing so but i think we're going to be okay now we did reach another level should be a little bit easier you can also see this flashing indicator here that that's a job that we could accept directly on the map. This is something we did talk about briefly last week, um, but there will be those types of jobs, especially when you start getting nearby those zones, they will pop up asking for your assistance. All right, so all of that being said, all of that being shown, let's go out here. We got Outlaw Hunt 1, destroy an Outlaw base for an unknown signal without taking any hole damage. I really wanna do that because of the reward, which we'll talk about in a little bit too. But for now, let's get this mission going. <clears throat> let's head to one of these undiscovered sites. We are looking for the ghost fleet and we have to disrupt the beanies, the signals, so that it's no longer hidden. chatters out there. I'm so glad that, Vin, you, thank you, uh, Geekbyte, for jumping in there and letting me know that I needed to adjust the green screen, but you guys were all over it. Thank you for that. You're you're really looking out for these streams, and I love that. I love I that I just had to wait until you took a breath, that was all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very nice. <clears throat> yeah, I'm seeing a couple little questions coming in right now, and I do want to point out that if any point in time during the course of these streams, you have a question, just ask. Let's just ask. Something that looks like a base. If we can't answer it directly right now in the moment, it'll be stored for a grouping of questions that we like to answer at certain intervals within the stream so that no question goes missed. All right, let's see where things are. Ah, yes, level six. So we shouldn't be cruising for a bruising around here. Oh my 
goodness. Yikes. Probably be uh, <clears throat> doing a little bit better with my evasion instead of just screwing around, huh? B word, we got some credits over here. Nice, nice. Oh, boy. Man, I, that the weight of the flak just feels so much better with that improved sound. Very much enjoy that. Oh, ow, pain. Be a little more careful about that in the future. Thanked. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now, as I have mentioned already and alluded to in the um, <coughs> announcement over on Discord, Keep your eyes peeled for anything that might look a little bit off or different or unique, but maybe was just on the screen at the moment and just think about it. Be curious about it because we'll have more things to talk about in the future. <laughs> but if you're paying attention, you, some of you might get really excited about what you see. The tease, oh man, the tease. So let's get to this base, pick it apart, move things forward. Let's also look really quick. Man, that, just, just look at that. Look at that. You see that adjustment? Tell me you see it. It should feel, it should feel so much more smooth. I can certainly feel it. All right, let's see. I'm uh, not sure I want to do a speed word. Granted, it's recharge delay and shutdown duration are way better. Actually, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. I've decided. Already maxed out. All right. Some pretty good stuff along the way here. I want a new purchases soon. I'm going to absolutely be needing a thruster because uh, I'm feeling like my boosting is just not up to stuff. home stretch you're gonna hear me talking a bit about like polishing passes and balancing and stuff like that which is a big aspect of what is kind of reserved in the home stretch of any particular development honestly <clears throat> so by keeping your eyes peeled you will be catching a lot of those little details along this way could or could not have been a beanbag we'll know in a sec bullseye I caught the distractor signal I can now triangulate its source to the other two locations. One's here, and the third... Damn, this is not good. Can't find it, or too dangerous? Let's just say it calls for more advanced planning. I'll focus on the next one for now, and then meet you back in the hangar. We can figure it out from there. Good call. See you at base. Excellent. So along the way of us doing this playthrough, <clears throat> a big part of this, it's not just to like reach out to those new to Everspace 2. No, it's also to show you what we've been cooking up behind the scenes. Because there have been a number of improvements to bring everything together. And again, you're gonna see, you're gonna see a bit of that along the way. Whether it's, you know, subtle little adjustments to big new features. Maybe not big new features, but new features. <laughs> We ain't got time for that. 
Less than two months for full release. What? Yeah. We're hitting the we're hitting the big stuff to make sure it is where it needs to be upon delivery. All right. So I want to destroy the rigged asteroid here. First, we're going to clobber these foes. Oh, this is oh, this is a level three location. I thought this was a little bit higher. Eh, maybe we won't do this. Maybe this one's not worth it at this moment. In fact, yeah, we'll we'll just move on. We'll just later. <clears throat> but I would like to clear a number of locations to keep my level progression keep going. But that one might be one of those things where I'm just gonna wait until Cedo levels up, and then I'll do that at a higher level and earn more experience with it. Uh, I see a conversation regarding DLSS 3.0, and it is to my understanding that we do not have plans to support DLSS 3.0. Um, Michael, I know that you're floating in the chat. If you can give me confirmation on that, I think that's, I think that's where we were at the last time we had a discussion. I just want to ensure that. I'm happy to be wrong. I just want to make sure that we have that, uh information correct oh Whew. that was rough all right nasty mine collecting up blueprints with a prize nice let's do a little bit of exploration here it can be kind of hard sometimes since it's all kind of shrouded and dust and mystery. Sometimes you might find something worthwhile. What do we have here? A mainframe component and annihilator virus. Excellent. I'll take that. Whenever you have a device, by the way, when you've already acquired it, like we had already received the Annihilator virus, when we gathered it from another source, it converts it directly to credits. So through that, we actually earned 2,000 and some credits just by picking that up. Really powerful means to accrue credits in the early game. We've got a nanotransmitter. Beautiful. Now that's the first time we've got it, so we're that's not converted to credits. Synchro pulse. Wait, 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 wait. Oh man, I think I think we have to, don't we? It's a level level six. It's gonna be pulling a lot of energy. Do with a better energy core. Oh, speaking of which. Alright. <laughs> Well, that was easy. <laughs> We're going to hang on to this thermal gun just in case, but I have a feeling we'll be dismantling it pretty soon. So, let's test this out real quick. All right, yeah, that feels good. That feels good. Oh, yeah, that's, that's much better against these foes. Let's go grab that, and then we'll complete this signal decoder. Or signal decoder, the, the signal, the beanie. Iron medicine, clothing, excellent. I really want to build up those credits to purchase a new ship or so. And for anybody who's kind of joining the stream now, and they haven't... Uh, taken in my engines just yet, or my lateral thrusters. We did customize those. 
Just a little bit, because we could. We have access to them at the moment. Gotta be a little more careful here. Oh my goodness. Boy, do we. Who hit us? Ah, I see. Try and there we go. What do we get? What do we get? Ooh, harvest gold! All right, that makes me happy. Start using some of our consumables because I really don't want to put all this work out here and then only it to all go sideways from a nasty missile shot or so. That would not be fun. Woo! All right. Once we're done taking out this base, for those of you who've been patiently awaiting the answer to some of those burning questions you got, we will in fact do so. We'll answer a slew of them. Should be all, yep, okay. Quite yeah, we have we have a little bit more in this area. I'd like to get this secure container just down here. Just hanging out. Since this is Cedo, a lot of the uh how should we put it? Puzzles, I guess. Are a bit more simplified, they're a bit easier. You don't have to do any big Big brain plays. Just kind of an introduction for how like energy sphere dispensers work, right? How the uh, energy cells work and picking them up, moving them around. And as the game moves along, of course, they are going to get a little bit more challenging. You will actually have to think. I know some of you guys don't like to do that. A mainframe component. I could always do with these. And the rewards for a lot of this exploration and the completion of the puzzles, it's not game breaking or game changing, but it can boost you to that next little level that you're looking for, as many of these mainframe components specifically are bound to those exploration challenges. So we'll go ahead and unlock this one and increase our firepower's total by 5%. Bra game breaking, let me tell you what. So uh, yeah, we do encourage you guys to explore because it can be beneficial, especially uh, later in the game because 5% of 125 ain't not, it's not a big deal. But in the later game when your firepower is 3000, well, 5% of that is it's a little bit more, right? And those do stack the more mainframe expansions that you put on each attribute, creating some useful ways to go about your builds and to maximize opportunities. All right, so now that we've taken out this particular base, I could do some, I'm gonna do some casual exploration as we start answering some of those questions that you have asked to get them out of the way and uh, confirm, denied, or otherwise. So Geekbyte, if you want to join me and start going through the list. I certainly will. Good evening, everyone. How are you all? Um, right, we've got a slew of them, five or six ready for you. Um, all right. So, starting up with Slorin Tetson over on YouTube. Uh, seeing as the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions uh, are not going to be available any longer because they're too weak uh, to run Everspace 2, will the minimum recommended PC specs change? This has been a point of conversation that we are looking at internally. And at this time, I cannot confirm or deny any sort of changes about the 
current state of our minimum specs or even our maximum specs. It is something that could change, but as you probably know, as developers and marketing and all of that type of stuff, like we really don't want to change that stuff as much as possible. So we're aiming to not have to, but um, yeah, time will tell on that front. Time will tell. So we'll have more information, if any more information in the future on that front. Good question. Ruby, right, Red Specret uh, up again on YouTube. Now they've noticed that there's the new uh, marker on the enemy is back to indicate something new in our inventory. Uh, they had an issue uh, with the frame drop bug. Uh, are they assumed that it's fixed now to bring that back? The frame, the frame drop with the um, the new items, the like the yellows that you're talking about. Yeah. That one, uh, I could double check and make sure that that one was addressed. I'm pretty sure that it was. I feel like there was a pretty strong discussion about that some time ago. Um, but yeah, um, I can double check and confirm that real quick. Let me just look at my secret information and see if I can find anything for you. But uh, otherwise, yeah, let's go to the next question while I'm pulling that up. Right. Uh, Hiker Freak over on Twitch has noticed that the coalition decal has moved uh, and they haven't seen it for quite some time. Um, but has it now been tied to a mission as yes. a reward? Yes, the, the <laughs> Bloodstar logo, as well as a lot of the logos that were previously in the game, like we had them there so you could customize, but we changed them because of, well, we wanted them to be associated with a particular unlock timing. So the Bloodstar logo is more associated with the Bloodstar quest line, which uh, occurs at a more specific part in the mission as opposed to just having it um, at the start. And that's also applicable to a lot of the other uh, emblems that are on your ship. They are now associated with some sort of unlock progression by accomplishing a task, some of which are in side missions. So you won't just get them through the natural progression of the story. You'll actually have to earn them. Um, so, and also to go back to, that's, it's a great question, by the way. So to answer the first question, I'm looking in our little um, bug reports and, and resolved status. And the one that um, I believe this was referring to is the memory leaks, right? Um, especially through various sorting and the, you know, the, the markers. It does look like we had that resolved uh, actually a, a while back. So um, it should be something that is fixed. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on that, especially when we enter into that 1.0 status. And uh, if something is really weird or bad, you bet your bottom dollar that we'll have a hot fix. So <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. All right, next question. Uh, right, just to drop back to regards the DLSS 3.0, Michael's actually okay, yeah. replied, being in touch, and he says, so haven't looked into DLSS 3.0 yet, can't promise anything for 1.0, but we're in close contact with our friends at Team Green. Uh, that is a non-announcement. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So thank you for that clarity. I just wanted, I wanted to make sure of that, because, I mean, again, these are these are a lot of elements that internally we want to, you know, do as much as we possibly can, but we also have to keep in mind the, you know, where we started and where we need to be sort of aspects of development. And right now where we need to be is getting the game done. Like, <laughs> so uh, any new features and additions and, you know, all that type of stuff, you know, they're fantastic. They're great. They're super duper. But we have a lot of promises that we are going to ensure we keep. And we've got a full release now on the docket, which we're not going to miss. So, yep. So thank you for that clarity. I do appreciate that. Um, one thing that's uh, cropped up in a couple of uh, the chats is uh, regarding the controllers. Um, are they supported? And um, any of the new players that have come into the game might want to know what we can actually use to control the game. Uh, so you mean like um, different gamepad schemes, the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro, Logitech, Satec X52 Pro, uh, Logitech, Pretty much Satec like X56 can they use keyboard mouse? control yeah there's a lot oh, okay yeah there, <laughs> there's a lot we have we have specific presets for a slew of them here i'll just kind of like get out of the way um so i mean we we have been there's been a lot of work done on a number of these actually but even if that's not good enough for you because i mean i'm sure i'm sure that 
those of you who use these styles of controller, you have your own layout. You have your own feel and style to it. I would be very surprised if you went in here, selected a preset and all was just perfect, right? That's, I doubt that very much. And that's fine because then you can go in here and you can customize your mouse and keyboard, your controller, your other, all to your heart's delight, okay? So that's very much something we want to ensure uh, is happening for the game space. And uh, there may or may not be even more added to this list. That's something that's also kind of a hard to say because, you know, we're in that home stretch. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think the only way that we would start getting into that territory is if something new came out and it was relevant to the game and then we would find a way to incorporate it. That's about it. So good question. These right. are great uh, questions, what? guys. This is wonderful. Keep it up. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, we're all excited after the release. Date. Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, Wild Charger over on YouTube. He's he's feeling a bit of a, a, a heartless monster by answering this, uh, asking okay. this question. But he All says, right. I don't think any cons consequences have been implemented yet for crashing into things mid super light. Will the proximity alert mean something at release? Yes. Yeah. That's uh, that's definitely <laughs> on the to do list. It's uh, yeah, very much feels weird that um, you can just fly through planets and stars and any celestial objects for that matter. Yeah, definitely is something we want to address. <laughs> a little bit of a cheeky question, but I appreciate it, Wild Charger. It's good. It's good. Respect. Uh, people have been asking in the chat what controller support will uh, actually be supported, and uh, anything with a USB input device should work. So dance yeah. mass instruments, fishing rods, you name it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if you want to customize a fishing rod, like you, you will have that capability. We don't officially support fishing rods per se, uh, but yeah, definitely, if you can plug it in, it can technically work, so. <laughs> uh, right, Flory over on Twitch. Um, a bit of a sneaky, I think they're trying to get a peek at things here as they sure. usually do. Uh, can Eric show us the Hive entry in the codex so we can check later what changed after we got him? <laughs> uh, I can probably show the Hive once we get to a important part in this mission chain. Okay. So with that being said, I'll start heading back to Rodia 2. There might be some dialogue here, uh, so if you can just hold off on a question real briefly. Um, Dax, make... anything new on that third distractor? Then we'll answer more questions. Dax? Hey, Dax went down to the hangar. He said he needed to prepare for something. Say, was your friend close to any Ethium when he was injured? Yeah, we were out mining for GNB when his engine caught fire. Why? He got what we call a crystal burn. It's caused by destabilized Ethium and inflicts serious progressive damage to human tissue. The only way to stop it from spreading is to amputate. Oh, man. I'll use some cyber prosthetics from the medical transport. The procedure will take a few hours. He never deserved any of this. Please be careful. Don't worry, it's what I'm trained for. Excellent. All right, next question. <laughs> Uh, um, right, uh, we have one from De Buds. Um Is there any chance of getting a sort of local mini-map, so when we're in a, a system, uh, if not re on release, maybe sometime in the future? I don't think there's a plan to do any sort of local mini-maps, or like 3D maps, I'm guessing, is kind of where you're going with that one. Um, that's never really been in the plans. We like the way that the game is just presented, where you just see stuff, and if you want to find more, then you just go around and you try to find it. So, um, yeah. So, no, we are we will not be having any sort of localized mini-maps. The main map overall is gonna be this, that we can zoom out and kind of show you here. Oh, that's kind of pretty. That's kind of pretty. We haven't shown this map in a while. Maybe you might notice something different, but <clears throat> I digress. Uh, right, that's all I've got for you. You can fly okay. on now, pilot. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so we'll head back into Rodia 2. We'll land. We'll get some more of the story going. Then we'll disembark on our way to hopefully finalize Cedo before the end of the stream. I really want to really wanna knock this out, get the hive and uh, other things. Yes. Very, very good. And I look over and I see people talking about USB guitars. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are nuts. I love it. Excellent. You're back. We're so close to finding the ghost fleet. 
But there's one last distractor between us and that hive. And it's located at the worst possible place. Halayman's wound. Isn't that where the Okart blew up a planet to end the war? Yeah, only one orbital fortress survived. Bloodstar used to hold me there, torture me. That was before they moved me to Fort Cetus, where we met. They tortured you? That job I'm working on? Gas mask had gotten wind of it. I thought treating me to some electroshocks would get me talking. But you can't get blood from a stone. During my stay, I got to see what they had stationed there. And let me tell you, Polemon's wound is a scrap ton of bad. And that place is their third distractor? Yep, but I'm not letting you fight them alone. Get yourself buffed up and prepare to be away for a while. I'll be waiting for you at the wound. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so we did get a new ship color, and I'm absolutely uh, applying it immediately. We're just going to go in here and uh, that harvest gold. I love it so much. Oh, that's 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 too much. That's that's all right. Uh, we'll uh, we'll do it to our secondary. I just want to brighten things up a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. I like that more yellow. Mm, that feels pretty good. Maybe we could do a little bit of highlighting with, with the rusty earth. Okay, all right. Yeah, because the rusty earth is the metallic. If, here, let me do this so you guys can actually see it. <laughs> um, but I think what we're going to do, lighten that up a little bit. Harvest gold, rusty earth. All right, we'll go that direction. And we only have the two colors for our window temp for now. We're going to stick with the yellow engine colors. We have everything on orange. I decided to just, just go for it. <clears throat> we uh, have emissive lights and decals now over here in the main window. So you can see that. We might just convert this over. Oh yeah, we got lava core. That could be fun. But we're going to go back to corn kernel now. to bring home this yellow theme. This yellow orange. And uh, yeah, that's all we got for now. For now. <laughs> okay. Let's see. If, last but not least, I think we're going to throw some things in the storage. Uh, no big deal. <laughs> All right, after all that's said and done, what we'll do is we'll grab ourselves a little bit more energy injection and a better cargo unit. Don't think we really need to worry about too much crafting. I think otherwise we're we're okay. I think we're okay. Oh, we need better thrusters. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and get rid of this booster and just roll, roll the dice. Let's get a... Uh, Let's get a better uh, thruster. Excellent, okay, so I probably shouldn't have dismantled the only thruster that I had. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's just cruise through this until we get a thruster. That should be totally fine and uh, not a problem whatsoever. <laughs> Perfection! Oh my gosh. There is no problem whatsoever. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeesh. All right. Let's see. Our energy cores are also uh, just a-okay -okay right here. We'll go ahead and tackle that. Uh, mm, it's not good enough. I'm going to keep the prime speed word. We'll re need to boost in order to restore, but I think that's going to be okay. bit more cleaning up do like how these have better range but it's a little bit of extra damage might come in handy might be useful a lot of scrap to start building a new could be very useful oh goodness all right that's looking pretty good Let's get back out there, get to this base, blowing stuff up. <clears throat> I could have reloaded my save if that was uh, super problematic, but uh, we got lucky, I suppose. It was, uh, maybe not what we should have done, but. Let's go ahead and see if we can top off this job before we head over to Palewan's Wound. 
Because if memory serves, Palemon's Wound is going to be a little bit of a level jump from where we're at. We're currently level 6. I think Palemon's Wound is actually... I think it's actually level 8. But we'll see. Also, what is this? Oh, that's a, that's a job. We'll keep going. I would really like to destroy an outlaw base, though, too. So we might continue to get slightly distracted in our quest to complete Cedo today. <laughs> That's a curious question I looked over and caught. I'll answer it really quick. So the question is, can we work towards a different home base in the end game? And the, the short of it is no, we, we don't have that. We don't have that. That's kind of a clever little idea, but uh, not what we're aiming for. That kind of goes a little bit outside of our vision, our plans, as clever as it is. I just wanna give that Expectation, a little bit more clarity right out of the gate. Woo, all right. Let's give ourselves some distance. All right. We'll try that again. Those teleport drones, man. Those teleport drones. I knew he needed to go down and I missed it. All right, here we go. First armor drone. Here, let's try and, uh, uh, they're gonna sweep around, aren't they? Oh, those overseers could be such a nuisance. Come on. Oh, and there's a sniper drone here. Oh, goodness. All right, hang on a second. I have not upgraded my device yet, have I? All right, that's on me, that's on me. So you used to end game playing, you know? You have all your little tricks and whatnot. Let's just, let's have a gander over here. Yeah, that's a level one energized boost. That absolutely does not do any sort of damage whenever you're boosting towards another uh, unit whatsoever. All right. Third time's the charm. <laughs> a little cocky, maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe a little, all right. You know, th these are level eights. That is something to point out. We are level six, these are level eights. Can be real easy to just assume like, oh yeah, you know, everything's gonna be just fine. I can go wherever I want, do whatever I want. It's not, not quite how it works. There are some locations that are just going to be inherently more difficult than where you are currently at. And you have to build your way up before you go in. Blueprint, I'll take that. Ah. There we go. Ooh, a rail gun? That might come in real useful, except it's too high level. All right, all right. Still, that does seem good. Yeah, if you guys recall, oh man, this is this is the same site that we died multiple times to before as well. Do you remember that? Remember that, guys? Oh shoot, we just opened up the hangers. Hang on a second. Be real careful here. Energy core. Okay, all right. Whoop. Use this to gain position. Certainly not to try and ram somebody. That would uh, that would be really silly now, wouldn't it? Yes. Oh, ouch! Woo, boy! Excuse me. Thank you. That was too close. 
No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Woo. Weber drones, man. Yeesh. Okay, this raider is new priority. Weapons are damaged. Oh my gosh. We got to try and close this gap. Oh, this is awful. Good toast. Back to business. All right, we're going to take a brief intermission from that sniper drone. No. <laughs> oh gosh. Ow. <laughs> that that sucks. Oh. Oh man, that was tough. Why do consumables take time to charge, but not guns? Oh, guns do take time to charge. They have, you have to get your energy back. Oh my gosh. That, I, I think that, that cut deep. We even knew we needed to run. We even knew we needed to run. All right, all right, all right. Okay, this is the last attempt. If things go south here, we're just gonna keep moving on the mission. I wanna complete this job though. This will be nice experience gains. It'd be really nice to top this off. Help us prep for that mission. But man, I was I was rough. Yes. All right. Let's try and just. Oh, we got to get the sniper drone first. I think that's that's going to be core issue number one to address. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. We're going to just go to the main mission. <laughs> Woo! Yourself? That's just pouring salt in the wound. That's not necessary. Oh, <laughs> uh, was that mine really that close? All right, all right. Okay, all right. Just turn it, turn it around. Nope. See you later. See you later. Oh my gosh, it's like levels actually matter now. That's ridiculous. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and make some more progress and go back to complete an easier side mission. No, 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 we're not gonna do that. We're gonna try and move forward with this mission chain. Palemon's Wound, it's gonna be higher level than us, but I do think we'll be able to turn things around there. Since we have this unknown signal, we're gonna see if it's an outlaw base or not. If it's an outlaw base, we'll try it. If it's not, we're just gonna keep going. We're just gonna keep going. Woo, and just an ambush, all right. Michael's calling you out in chat now. Oh yeah, Michael, do you want to play and show everybody your skills? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Goodness gracious! Oh yeah, alts though. Yeah, you're actually right. Yeah, I should definitely um, probably use that. <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah, that grouping there at the very beginning, that would have been a, a nice use of the alt, that's for sure. So I, I touche, touche, yep. Oh, somebody clipped a sniper drone, ouch, pain. But yeah, no, that's a good clip, that's a good clip. Oh man, everybody in chat's even saying use your alt. That is rough. All right, here, we're gonna use our alt, okay? Scout's honor, so that's, that's what it is. All right, I'll try to stay close. You do your magic. All right, what do we got? Level seven. Shouldn't be too rough, he says as a sniper drone begins his lock. Ooh, that dodge though. Pro pro gamer skills. About time for that, right? Oh, All right, those guys are past us. Docs will keep them busy. Let's get this bomber next. Oh, the destroyer's here. Forgot, first time seeing a destroyer. Let's get behind the asteroid. Let's use some cover. Really want that bomber, but if he's gonna if he's gonna hide as well, then we'll just take out the proto scout first. We'll play this a little bit more strategically. It's coming at me from all angles. You got flanking maneuvers. What is this? Whew. All right. 
Let's try and, uh, well, this, that's not gonna do much. Come on, come on. Armor break. Oh, no. Don't hit me with that. Okay. You're so close. There we go. Okay, we gotta get that destroyer down, um, but also we don't wanna get barraged by missiles this whole time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bomber out first, then we are just gonna go all guns blazing, including our ult. I have not forgotten, I just don't wanna use it against a single foe. Hmm, all right, how should we address this? Oh, this isn't too bad, this isn't too bad. Okay, this is all right. Serve a little bit of that alt. Cool guys never look at explosions. All right. Good. I want to see more of that. Of what exactly? Of us being still alive. I hate how appropriate that comment was from Dax. <laughs> yes. Level up. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, gosh, that feels good. Oh, that shot! Taking out his shields! Oh, yes! That, that's not something you see every day. Grabbing a barrel bomb to negate the shield of a fighter? Oh, gosh. Ah! We're having fun today, boys. Oh my gosh. Who's in charge of these streams? Go ahead and start. Oh! No, 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 no! Man! If you guys have not noticed yet, it ju I just, I want to point this, because this is, this is actually incredibly important. The game has since changed from the before fall update to after the fall update into this dev branch that I'm showing you, okay? The changes have not just been a simple matter of like, oh, let's change some stats around a little bit, okay? We have gone in and very intentionally ensured that your level progression matters, okay? Quick talking point. I would not be dying back to back to back like this had we not changed our system. If everything was dynamically scaling more towards where we were at, things would more or less look pretty consistent across the board. Good or bad, whatever, it would have been the same. But now by decreeing internally that we will have your level different from the levels of locations that you venture to, now we actually have territories where you have to figure out when to use your alt, when to use your consumables, how you're using your weapons, making sure that your gear is up to date, which by the way, should probably do. We, need, we should probably check that out. Like these now become integral systems, not, not just casual sort of they exist in the game and they're nice or whatever no 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 these are now integral systems if you want to play at a very hard level of difficulty which we are doing so let right. that be try to stay close. some be insight magic. for how we have been addressing a lot of these core values these foundational systems like this level progression system since we open those doors from that fall update to even now. It's been a wild ride, but it's been such a healthy way for us to now invoke necessary understanding of the core systems within the game space. So we are pretty thrilled with the results thus far. If you couldn't tell, 
We are pretty thrilled with how it's been coming together. Because this should not be a cakewalk, folks. Even though Cedo is technically the tutorial system, it should not be a cakewalk. Ah! Ah! No! Come on! Come on! Okay, we're gonna take a quick breather here. Get some stuff, some space. Level eight, come on! <laughs> All right. Or just get good, I see in the chat. Yes, this is also very valuable, very important feedback. In fact, whenever individuals on the forums and whatnot, they're like, oh yeah, I seem to be having an issue with this mission. It's just like way too difficult and you devs are terrible and you need to balance the game. My response is generally, yeah, just get good. That's, that's really the, that's the core problem. That's what, it, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> Gosh, you guys are savages. Man, I still, I hope somebody clipped that Proto Scout, Proto -Scout uh, bomb throw though, because that felt freaking awesome. That felt really freaking awesome. Okay, we are gonna go after this destroyer next, because, uh, yeah. Just gonna go after him next. Come on! Can't tell if I'm the one blowing up or <laughs> Woo, get some distance. Oh, he didn't die. Oh gosh, oh. I was the one blowing up. Oh my gosh, I thought it was him. Oh, nuts. All right, there we go, there we go. Easy, first try. All right, let's get back into the fray here. A little bit. Wait, didn't we get a, didn't we get a rail gun? Did we get, no, that was before we uh, died. Okay, so we don't have our rail gun opportunity here. Couple other things we could tweak, but I'm not gonna be too worried about it. I'm gonna start lining up some more of this. I'm not gonna overlap this because that'll be a 25 second reduction and I don't, I, I, we're not doing that. But otherwise, this seems like it'll be okay for now, for the time being. Oh, that will help. That will help. Um, okay. What exactly? Us being still alive. Oh, I missed the bomb. Ah, oh, I missed the bomb. All right, come on, give it. This could be a sticky situation here. All right, okay, all right. Reposition. We're not uh, not liking how we're getting surrounded once again. One step at a time. A real gun would actually be really nice right now. That's a big missile. Is that a... Where are the big missiles coming from? There we go. Credits. I'll take those. Aw, oh, some copper. Nice. This is really important right now. Oh my gosh, those missiles. Where is this coming from? You're shooting me from all the way over there. Are you serious? All right, hang on a second. We just gotta take out these missile silos. I'm not too worried about the bomb thrower at the moment. <laughs> all right, let's get back over to the main base. Man. 
It's been a while since we had this uh, exciting of uh, combat, I feel like, in these streams. This is, uh, pretty nuts. At least it was for me. Keep coming. Yes. Man, you really got it in you. Whew. Well, I'm a prime ballista, remember? Prima ballerina. But I guess in your case, that's the same thing. All right. All right, no more bomb throwers. Good, good. Okay, all right, all right. Now, by destroying these targets, we are gonna get more targets that warp in. This is kind of like a story chain element that happens. Good, just don't let your guard down just yet. We don't want that Weber drone at all. Teleport drone, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. All right. No, oh. Hans Christian, why did you add those now? Ugh. All right. All right. Oh, that's not going to hit him. Oh, it hit him. Oh, come on. <laughs> Woo. Okay. All right. For those who are unfamiliar with the teleport drone, which is most of you, since this is a completely new enemy, it teleports a lot. It's very hard to hit. It doesn't necessarily pack too much of a punch, but when it's combined with a couple of other opponents, especially when you're trying to like single target damage or even like splash damage, they can be an incredible nuisance. Scots, come on, go, 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 go. Excellent. We're almost done here. Just a couple more. Let's get the last fuel. We have coils. We still have to shoot down. I think they're on this side. Maybe? I'm so focused on the enemies. Dax is finally pulling his weight and attacking some foes. Seriously, where the- ah, all right, I see you. Two more, where are you at? I know you're here somewhere. We'll also get this valuable shipwreck. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, we're just going to swap that out for the damage limiter. And once we uh, complete this area or die again, we'll answer some more questions, guys. In case you're wondering. I need to figure out where these last remaining energy coils are at. I thought they were right here. Ah! Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. There we go. Let's smash that thing. Oh, that's rough. Hiding in the little corner like that. Hell yeah! See that marker? That's the ghost fleet right there. Yeah, it's on the other side of the planet. Up for grabs for the whole system to see, too. We better hurry before the scavengers start flocking. Wonderful. Okay, so now we've picked up a little bit more loot. We are going to jump out of here and save. And if a sniper drone kills me, oh my god. All right. Woo! Auto save! Woo! <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so we do have the Ghost Fleet now available. Uh, let's go ahead and answer some questions as we start getting prepped for this battle. 
So what do you got for me, Gary? Uh, I've got a few. I've got a few. Most people were just dying of laughter for oh, per- uh, the last 10, 15 minutes, but that's great. <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> Yeah, what could possibly be so hilarious about that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, first up, we've got uh, a question from Bobby Crocker Shoes on Twitch, and he's asking, "Does Lunacy or will Lunacy 1000 be the highest difficulty in the rifts, or will there be more types of Lunacy uh, in there, or higher Lunacy? To be determined. We'll have more information on Lunacy, as well as rifts in the future, more close to 1.0, if not after because we are not finished with the rifts. So, kind of have to give you a non-answer there. Sorry about that, but yeah. We'll share more information when we've got more information to share. Cool. Yeah. Right, uh, another question of Twitch, and that's from Use4. Uh, what will the rating be for this game? How much foul language or adult situations at all? Uh, the reason they ask is that his kids are normally uh, watching play the game, so he's curious. Now, Michael has answered this okay, uh, with okay. a probably uh, it's going to be teen stroke Peggy yeah. 12. Yeah, so, and I'm sure you guys probably noticed we have, we are fairly gentle with the language for the most part, but every now and then you get an expletive. And yeah, I mean, that's kind of like one of those sort of factors into that style of, of like rating systems and whatnot. Uh, but overall, like we're not trying to be like gruesome or gross with like violence and gore or anything like that, as you can clearly tell in the spaceship focus uh, and the mechanical designs. So yeah, we are going for that uh, PEGI 12 uh, rating. So yep, around those teens. Yep, really good question though, really good question. Right, and Flory's digging again. Oh, of <laughs> you course. know what Flory's like. <laughs> I love it, I love it Flory, keep digging. Also keep <laughs> keep supplying those great screenshots by the way, I've been enjoying what you've been doing in the Discord. Uh, he's asking, are there going to be any other new enemies besides the teleporter drone, which will come with 1.0? I mean, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. So, I'm not telling you what they are. So I tell you, it's, it's like you're fishing, but yeah. I mean, we, we've we've said that there's going to be more uh, enemy types. Uh, they they are inevitable. Yeah, they are inevitable. So yeah, no worries. No worries. Uh, that's all I've got for the time being. People are still recovering from your death. So. Okay, perfect. Yes. Uh, excellent. <laughs> all right. So let's Check find ourselves a hive. Ships, and I'll keep watch for newcomers. The longer we linger, the more trouble will come our way. Mm, something about this place seems oddly familiar. Mm. Mm. Um, I do see a question from Chadawi though, um, which, by the way, again, compliments to your insane racing skills. Uh, Michael's already answered it, but... Um, they asked about the Outlaw Dreadnought, which we have shown concept art for. So it's no stranger to what that would effectively look like would, if it would be in our game. And uh, long story short, it's not scheduled for 1.0, no. Not 1.0. Oh, looks like I've got company. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and start getting these AI units. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. No. You raiders. Ow! Really should figure out where that armor drone is. Oh! <clears throat> Quit protecting him! Stop it, overseer. There we go. Come on, I just want to finish this mission chain! There we go. Alright, let's get some hive units. Probably. This one's on the fritz. Alrighty. I feel like we need to save before we do this one. Oh gosh. So the unstable power cores, as a reminder, they do explode if uh, they get touched by anything. That was actually way closer than it should have been. Woo! No luck. Looks 
like the hive self-destructed along with their vessels. Yeah, the fleet was always stingy when it came to their hive tech. Oof. They didn't even give one to me. Something about this place feels horribly wrong. We really shouldn't be here. Demolisher? Oh gosh. Starting to see them now. That's uh that's no bueno. Alright. Let's get one more here. Or attempt to get one more here. I think it's this way, right? More careful about that. do some exploration in here but we have taken a bit of time to complete this and i want to wrap this mission chain up so let's go ahead and do this when the gas mask said that no one ever left this place alive i finally remembered because it was certainly true for me shit is that you in there yeah a marauder shot down my thrusters they plundered my ship, but didn't kill me. Had to wait until I ran out of oxygen for that. Man, I'm sorry. Let's search this thing and never come back. <clears throat> hey, it's still active. Ive, buddy, do you read me? This is me, Muchlab, in her six-mile ball chunks. Sounds broken. Genitive arm, madam to eternities. Maybe it's just his speech module? It might still be able to override the jump gate. Meet me at Union Bridge so we can give it a try. So, some of you may have noticed a couple of new things that popped up on the screen. Good for you. <laughs> There are, of course, more elements coming to uh, Iverspace 2. One of those things, which these elements are alluding to, is the inclusion of achievements. <clears throat> so when we get through the gate, I take it you're meeting this friend of yours, right? Yeah, Maddox. We're supposed to rendezvous with a ramen joint at Prescott Starbase. Dex, that body we just found, when I saw it, it felt like that was still me in there. I remember dying so many times. It's almost as if I never even had a life at all. I get your point. It's yeah, dying so many times. That's uh, it's gotta be rough for him. Specif specifically specifically this guy. It's been a long time since I served in the fleet. But I still wonder if I could ever stop being a soldier. Can't imagine how it must be for a guy like you. 
He's been at war for multiple lifetimes. But I do believe I know what you're thinking. Yeah? Yeah. You're thinking it can't end like this. It cannot. Bark the wheat and tricks, and the larp signs crackle. Let's hope for both our sakes that this hive really works. All right. Yeah, a lot of you guys noticing story elements. There's been some adjustments to, like, the um, in-game cutscenes. Absolutely. We're going to be looking at a lot of that stuff. There are some new little treats that you will be able to find at full release. Now, that being said, I'm skipping them here because they're a surprise for that sweet, sweet full release. But if you want to know a little bit more about what I'm kind of referring to, definitely make sure that you check out our latest update that came out on April 6th. There's a lot of fun, delightful inter information. Up, 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 up. See what I mean? See what I mean? See what I mean? So uh, you'll have to wait until full release. You have to wait. It's almost like I planned all of that stuff to come directly together. All right. <clears throat> We're gonna head over to the home base. <laughs> oh my gosh, everyone's losing their crap. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a lot more information in regards to uh, delightful little trinkets and uh, story additions, improvements, and whatnot. Some of which you'll see here. Some of which you will not, and you have to wait. You'll have to just wait it out. So we're going to get over here to the home base. We're going to dock, and we are just about ready to cruise into Union. we got a couple other little things to tackle. But before we do that, we are going to go ahead and call it a save day at this point. Quick repair, quick restock, and we'll just quick quick look at our ship too, because I feel like we got we got something else. Oh yeah, we got ooh, we got Viridian. That could be fun if we've got the right emissive lights to complement. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What about engine colors? No new engine colors. Oh man, that's unfortunate. No new window tints. How do we get those? I think I even mentioned that I was probably gonna make some sort of statement on that. Uh, but man, let me just check my. Uh, challenges really quick and just oops oh gosh would you look at that i accidentally just opened that up for everybody to see uh, that's my bad all right let's go ahead and uh just go ahead and save the game right here we'll continue <clears throat> this bad boy next week right here for experiencing those brand new cutscenes, a couple new voice lines and a couple other little trinkets and delights of course if you keep your eyes peeled especially and we may have more to talk about on that uh those, 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 some of you noted some elements that looked a little different surrounding commodities. So yeah, we'll, we'll get to that all in good time, all in good time. For now, we're gonna take a really quick break. Then we're gonna look at the screenshots from the community challenge, which the theme was explosions. And I think that you guys were on point with what you did. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and review those and we'll issue a new challenge as well as have a little bit of fun. Yeah, it'll be good. All right, one second guys. And of course, as a reminder, there's also all these places that you can go and follow us and, and all that stuff. You know that. You know that. Okay. One moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and now we are going to be covering the community screenshot 
challenge. And it was uh, quite a delightful one, I feel like. We had some really good submissions, so we're gonna be cruising through every single one of them. And what we do is we start from the lowest voted. They were all community votes from all of you in the Discord. So if you voted, awesome. You contributed, made this a lot more possible, a lot more lively. And the winner of this gets to have bragging rights for a week. It's just a fun little thing we like to do. And uh, we, are, we are absolutely delighted with how things have come across. This first shot, this first shot comes from uh, Dawn of Will. So I've been seeing a couple more shots from Dawn of Will, and I think that they captured some nice explosions. It's got two votes, two votes. That might not seem like a lot, folks, but let me tell you what. When you enter into the challenge thereof, some of these screenshots, like there's a lot to choose from, and sometimes, it's just, man, you just don't know. You don't, it's, it's hard to vote. It can be really challenging to know where you want to put your vote in. By the way, you can vote multiple times. It's, there's no, <laughs> there's no rule against that. But still, Donna Will swinging in. This was the last submission. And to that, I also would like to point out that whenever we do these challenges, whenever we do these, uh, these sort of community guided elements, almost always the people who submit their shots earlier get more votes simply because there's more opportunity to be voted on. So keep that in mind. This is the very last one that was submitted, but still pulled in two votes. Nice. Next one we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, gotta click on the image for it to rotate. Next one we got comes from Terrible Ogre. And Terrible Ogre also capitalizing on those screenshots. He liked this one for the sake of it being fire and ice themed. Clever, I like it. I commend it. Comes together well. Very, very good. Next up, we've got the Chemical Bro. This one, this one turned my head. I, I had, a, I definitely did a double take. Um, so I don't know if all of you guys see it, but what this reminds me of is like a siege tank from StarCraft. <laughs> you see it? I thought that was brilliantly composed. Very nice use of an explosion at the, you know, the tip of this, whatever it is. This is clever. It's very clever. And he netted two of your votes as well. So next up, we've got a shot from, oh, I got to zoom out. Next shot we got from Bill Farson. Now, Bill, uh, whenever he submitted, I want to make sure all of you guys know, whenever you're doing the screenshot submissions, I highly encourage you to submit each screenshot separately. You can always upload two screenshots for these challenges, but when you upload them at the same time, you can't vote for one or the other. You have to vote for both of them. So Bill Farson, he uploaded both of his images in one message. So he got two votes for both of them. So kind of got one vote for each, I guess, but still putting it here as two votes. We just got to keep that in mind, okay? So make sure whenever you're submitting in the future, one screenshot at a time. That way you can individually vote. But it's, a, I mean, it's definitely fit in the bill. It's an explosion. We got Flory, who uh, this image keeps coming back and it doesn't make me upset at all. Flory, I love how you keep bringing it back. This one with all of the explosions all over the place. Definitely bringing that healthy dynamic in a good way. Bringing things home. Very enjoyable. And I love the way that you're composing your shots here as well. Just, you know, almost making it look like it's underwater in a way. It's crazy how that works. Crazy how that works. It always fits. <laughs> I suppose in a lot of ways it does. Like it was the devices. It was the, not really the red and green uh, challenge. It didn't fit that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're you're not wrong. It does fit pretty well. Yeah, cause I, I yeah. Yours was also a repost. We'll get to that one. We have Phantom Lord who got three votes. We got three votes. Oh man, I shoot. I was uh, I was talking about Bill Farson having both of. Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, I was Bill Far Bill Farson. So okay, so let's keep going. Phantom Lord here ha also had three votes from the community. A lot of explosions, a lot of crazy stuff going on. Capitalizing on those mines, which I do think is a really great way to implement those uh, the the theme here. I think it comes together really well. As well as seeing shields break, I think that's also a really good tool at your disposal. 
lot of you guys capitalized on that. Nice job. Nice job. <clears throat> uh, I see a, a, just a random question. Is there a chance for a free demo? Uh, yes, there is a free demo. Yeah, you can you can go grab a, a free demo. Um, uh, oh, getting an update. It's been updated with every update. And there's, yeah, like when we reach 1.0, it will also receive an update. We've been keeping it updated. So, yeah. It's not going to get like all the content to it because it still locks you at level five, I think. Right? But yeah, the demo will still, uh, demo is still planned to get updates so that you can have a good sense of what the full experience is going to be. All right. Bouncing over back here. We have, this is the second one from Bill Farson. Again, he posted both of his images in the same grouping, but they both got, I think I said two, but he actually got three votes. Excuse me. So we got three votes between the two of them. Really like the way that he used the background elements here though. Great use of color through just a single explosion. The simple approach here, I think works really well. We have this shot, this classic shot from Flory, stemming from Everspace One. We'll, we'll count it, that's fine. You know, we didn't say that the community screenshot contest must come from Everspace Two. So thinking outside the box, it's great. That's a that's a great it's a great explosion for sure. I'm gonna crop it for you, <laughs> but I think it comes together really well. I love the way that the um, the Okar frigates crumble. I love how that works in Everspace One. Nice shot. <clears throat> this one also had three votes, by the way. Moving into Phantom Lord's other shot. This one also received three votes. And that ship coloration is very similar to the scout that I showed at the start of the stream. That's wild, actually. Uh, but very nice, very nice. Also, using that cool guys never look at explosion policy. Yep, it's good. Definitely solid on that front. We're moving into, uh, we're almost moving into the uh, four-pointed territory. We got another three votes for Terrible Ogre's other one. I love the way that he capitalized on an explosion as the ship is warping in. Very nice. Wait, that's not a warp in. That's a, is that a railgun shot? Shoot, now I'm questioning everything. Either way, it looks awesome. I think, that, I think that's the player ship out there. Yeah, that's the player ship. Uh, you can tell because of the pixels. Yeah, there's there's definitely shots fired over there as missiles are going to the. Okay, yeah, that's not that's. I thought that was a warping effect. Silly me. But uh, it's, it's way to way to capture the moment. Very nicely done. Now we're getting into four vote territory, guys. Okay, so the voting is entirely on you all. You you get to determine those votes. You get to do what you will. You can vote for yourself. You can vote for everybody else. Do whatever. Like we give free reign on the voting for these community challenges. Maybe that's a little too laissez-faire. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe that's totally how it needs to work, but that's what we are doing. This shot, I love this shot. Crispy muffin. Gosh. I just, it's it's wonderful. It's delightful. I love the use of color here. I love the explosions all around. The depth of field choice is also phenomenal. The angle, like every everything's following the same angle of approach, right? You get this beautiful dynamic angle uh, cutting into the screenshot. It just, it comes together so well. Four votes, four votes. So now we're getting into the beefier stuff, right? Now you can start seeing that, right? Uh, it's all to counts a loud phantom lord. Oh my gosh, you devious man. If you're gonna cheat for just some bragging rights on the Discord. Yeah, so I did say cheat. Alt accounts definitely I would put into the realm of cheating. But uh, <laughs> I suppose if you really want bragging rights that bad, ooh, uh, uh, not gonna encourage that, yikes. Next shot comes from Excel. Oh yeah, okay, now we're feeling these explosions. All right, look at that. That's also, that's a pretty scout. That is a pretty looking scout. I love the colors. Very classic look, very colonial, right? Even though it's more red than it is, uh, you know, like kind of like that orangey red, the burnt, burnt orange. 
but I love how he's swooping in past this just exploding platform, I believe, of this outlaw structure. As there's so much else going on, but it's also nice that he captured a different color. It almost sets the tone for uh, what's more to come here. Seeing those purple explosions versus like the constant orange and reds, like it's something new, something a little bit fresh, a nice take. Stands out really well. So Excel netted five votes for this one. And then we're bouncing over to Excel's other shot that also got five votes. Now these were two separate images. They both got five, okay? That's, that's really well done. That comes together really stinking well. And I really want to commend the use of colors on this shot. Everything looks so crystal clear. It almost does look like there was additional fabrication going on, but it was just some simple adjustments in the photo editor. That's really well accomplished. I mean, this is great. The colors, they're not trying to compete with one another. It all is just beautifully composed. Big time explosions, his base is going down. And then look at that. Look at that striker. Strike and oppose. Like, it's, it's, it's wonderful. This is definitely something I would like to pull out of the screen and just slap on my wall. It just, it's, it's nice. It is very nice. All right, let's move into the next shot. We are getting into the final shots here. We got a, we got one from Dawn of Will. This is Dawn of Will's second shot. And very explosive. Got this bomber, which is triggering basically an alt right where he's at. Or, or, excuse me, not an alt. Uh, well, actually, technically it is an alt. It's the Arc 9000, right? Right where he's at. Did he explode to death? I'm not quite sure. You can actually sustain the damage if you time the... Um, uh, the perk that gives you uh, damage reduction, the the, the whole like fi reactive armor. There it is. That's what it's called. If you pair that together well, you can actually avoid all arc 9,000 da damage. You fire it basically on yourself. You pop that. Explodes everything around you. It's kind of a nice trick. Might be what's going on here. Or he's completely and totally destroyed himself just for the sake of a photo. Either way, comes together pretty well. Nice shot, Donald. Next one comes from Taste the Rainbow's Spoot Knight shot. So Spoot Knight definitely feeling good about the colors popping out of this one. <clears throat> that is a, I really am curious how you captured that. Like it's so freaking close. I haven't had any sort of distortion like that to me, but uh, yeah, a lot of people enjoyed this one. This one also got five votes, five solid votes bringing it together very solid now we're in the final shots here six votes for crispy muffin putting a lot of emphasis on an explosion uh, depth of field man it makes all the difference in these shots and these screenshot contests man and that's a that is a very pretty looking interceptor too i i like the wings on that i like the colors and the fact that it's complementing all of these explosions going around, it's very, you know, we're not trying to do too much. Simplicity is key, and it's the beautiful things that's coming out of these shots. Very well captured. Would be nice if you changed those engines from blue to orange, though. Can't you, can't you do that? Can't you? All right. <laughs> we'll get there. We're close. But last but not least, our number one shot. <laughs> Whew comes from Kazaa. This one is a little bit older. It was utilizing a bug, but they took the screenshots. They were able to bring it into the fold for this community contest, which was not restricted by versions. So you could use any version of Everspace 2 to capture these screenshots. I very intentionally left that open. You guys delivered. Very nicely done. Very nicely accomplished. Uh, wow. Also, I just, I remember this bug and how you were you know, like extracting it and showing various videos of it too. And my goodness. But if you guys, if you're looking at this, you're like, you can't even really tell what's going on. All of those explosions everywhere are from Okar Corvettes. They're primarily Okar Corvettes that are just getting abolished is <laughs> the best way to describe it. Just everything is just getting annihilated. Needless to say, we had some, uh, <clears throat> 
kinks in the game system that allowed some exploitation of uh, item grinding through the oak heart at a certain point in time which has since been corrected but still what a powerful and fantastic shot from kazaa so kazaa you have earned the bragging rights which will be given to you shortly following the stream you'll be able to go around and tell everybody else how awesome you are for completing this explosive challenge this community screenshot challenge for this particular week so well done 10 votes from the community that is not a low number that is good good stuff so i know that while i was going through this challenge that you guys have continued to ask questions and that's awesome that's awesome so let's go ahead and keep this beautiful screenshot that got those those votes to win the contest as we start answering some of those questions that you've got and when we're done here we'll then transfer over to and address the next community challenge we have for you so geek bye what do we got we have four lined up for you uh, oh, nice. first up we have Super Scrapper over on Twitch. Uh, there's a question about changing the reticle color when you're in range of an enemy versus out of range. Uh, will the weapon uh, reticle change? <clears throat> there, there isn't a reticle change uh, for the whenever you're in range. The big things that's the the big thing that you really notice, and it kind of also depends on the weapon, is that you will see um, the reticle get a little bit larger with the indication of your leading shots. Now I do say that it depends on the weapon, right? Because if you're using a beam laser, you don't have to lead those shots. So that never pops up. And maybe the change is a little subtle, but we do have that adjustment for when things come into range. We don't want it to be associated with a change of color. However, we want the color change to be associated when you are hitting the ships. So if you're ever firing and you see like a little bit of red showing up within the reticle, that means you are it's it's connecting right so there's not any plans to change that there's not any plans to customize the reticle either i want to be very upfront and clear about that so you guys are aware um but uh, aside from those elements we do have which is somewhat correlated to your question we will have uh, color correction uh, for accessibility uh, options depending on what your uh, if you have any sort of color blindness um, or color deficiency. So, but yeah, regarding the reticle, there's not any, there's not really any sort of intent to have it change colors uh, and that's not planned and there's not planned customization surrounding that, but you will see red within the indicator whenever you are striking your opponents. All right, next question. Lori's digging again. <laughs> Here he goes. If Viridium paint is highly illegal and Okar don't seem to uh, like it being used, how can we have a Viridium paint for our ship? Or was that paint for the light thrusters? So the Viridium paint is in fact for the ship itself. And yes, there is a side mission at the very start where Vir Vir it's clear that Viridium products are illegal. Now, I know this is, it's gonna sound like a bit of a stretch and I saw these be like, no, you're cheating the system, you can't do that. The color, is not illegal that you acquire and apply to your paint, to your to your ship. It's just that the paint color is called Viridium. It's not actually made of Viridium. Oh my gosh, I know, I know. It's just called Viridium because it has the same color appearance as Viridium, but what you are using on your ship is not actually Viridium. <sighs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it says, there it is. I look over the chat, scam, ruined forever. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, I knew it, I knew it. But yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, there is a distinction there. <laughs> uh, it's a good right. question. Though. I like that. It's clever. Same again from Flory this time. Uh, it's more of a law question. Um, good. How did the hive gibberish come to be? Ooh, I'd have to, I'd have to defer uh, to uh, another team member for that one. I don't know the specific uh, way to respond to that. Other than, we wanted the finding of the hive to be something of a uh, joy to our veteran players, having uh, so many rich moments shared between the player character and the hive. And in finding the hive, we found that like, if it was just dead silence and you find it, you're like, oh, well, it's not operating. Maybe we can fix it. There's like this lack of connection there. There's, it just didn't feel right to just have that empty space. So I know that the gibberish was something to help 
bridge that gap from the discovery to like, oh, I've got my hive back and hearing his voice, but messed up, then it's like, okay, well now we know that we have to, we have to keep pushing this. We have to get to that state of correction uh, in order to bring it all together. So I know it's something along those lines, uh, something, something to that effect. Um, I don't know the whole story, but the main thing is we added the gibberish because we didn't want there to just be silence and you get a broken hive that you have to fix. So, yeah. Oh, some, something, something like that. Something like that. So, good, good question. So, we got one more question, you said? One more? Oh, we've got two because another one just oh. came in. Excellent. Um, Bearded Frog's just asking. Yeah, uh, excellent. What is, what is the current <clears throat> progress of Arc 9000 mining for 1.0? Are we getting it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Let me go and ask Hans Christian, who has over 600 items in his checklist, and see how that's coming along. <laughs> Gotta step that one up on the priorities, huh? Whew. All right. Um, no, I don't think that's gonna happen. I just, <laughs> I know you're kind of memeing, uh, but uh, yeah, the, the Arc 9000, we, there hasn't really ever been an intention to have alts be used for mining ever. And, uh, shooting an arc 9000 into a mineral field and it not dropping the minerals does it feel right does it feel wrong we really don't care like it's just it's just not something that we're addressing like gonna be honest about it we want to add the sweet sweet delicious content to reach that 1.0 state and arc 9000 mining is just unfortunately just didn't make the cut all right next question <laughs> uh next up we have uh one question from slorine tetson uh, over on youtube uh, will Bearded Frog's Rift community build from a few streams ago, is it still going to be viable in 1.0 or will those dynamics have changed a lot? There will be some dynamics that do change, uh, but I have a feeling that most of the builds that you guys have created are going to be entirely irrelevant. And the main reason for that is because they're level 25 builds. So you'll have to rebuild everything in order to utilize that in-game level 30 state. So it's a little bit of a technicality on that one, but if you're building out a similar way that you had, which I know is the main element of your question, to address that, yeah, it should still probably be effective, though we are refining that Rift system even further since there are some noteworthy elements to correct on a side of balance and just that fun factor uh, overall. So I do like that question. It's a good question. It's a good question. So. Excellent. That's the last one for now. Oh, perfect. Excellent. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, actually, we have another question from Bearded Frog who says, can I still refund the game? <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Oh, beautiful. Well, if you're past the two hour mark, sorry, man. I can't really help you. <laughs> All right. So community screenshot contest. Kazaa. Excellent round of applause. You deserve it. Fantastic work looks great feels great that is everything that we asked for in regards to explosions so we're moving into the next week and uh you know we've we thought about this for a little bit and you know valentine's day is coming up right and there's been a lot of things to be excited for and there's been a lot of you guys who've been putting in a lot of love to both the aspects of our own development and providing feedback and ideas and like just engaging in general within the community there's been so much more and we've taken note of that and we just want to share our love right back at you. And it's it's awesome. It's so great. So the theme for next week is going to be love. It's going to be Valentine's Day. It's going to put all the emphasis on all things uh, respect and joy and happiness. And, you know, think, think all those wonderful thoughts. And I want you to capture shots specifically in the Everspace franchise, Everspace 1 and 2, capturing those moments. Right? I'm expecting we're going to see a number of Alex shots, and that's great. I dig it. Let's bring it. Uh, but I want to see ways that you represent <coughs> bringing all that together. You will have two shots that you can submit. Two shots that you'll submit. Uh, so I'll open up the channel shortly uh, after the stream here. And uh, again, you want to submit them separately from one another. So you'll submit one screenshot, then you'll submit another one. If you submit them both at the same time, then the votes that would be applied it's you're basically getting a half vote for each you want them separate you can get more votes that way and per the usual rules we'll also have it to where it ends on thursday i'll, I'll start an event afterwards as well on discord 
It will start now. It will end on Thursday. And after Thursday ends, the channel will vanish. So not only will you not be able to submit shots, you will no longer be able to vote. So highly encourage you to get in on this this weekend. And like come Monday or so, you start plugging your shots in, voting process will happen, and then we'll have our winner to give those bragging rights to. Anything from Everspace 1, Everspace 2, the demo, the prototype, like all of that stuff, yeah, all of that can be utilized. I think the most shots are gonna come from Everspace 2, and I mean, that's honestly what we want, but I mean, if you still find a way to share the love from Everspace 1, that's totally great. I will also add one more rule though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stipulate one new rule here, and that is I really wanna see new shots taken. I do. I want to see new shots taken. So instead of perusing through your previous catalog, which I know some of you are probably already doing, you, I want to see completely new shots that are taken. So to a degree, it has to be the latest version of Everspace 2, the latest version of Everspace 1, the latest version of the prototype. How does that work? Uh, <laughs> the latest version of the demo. But you get the point. You get the point. So, <laughs> excellent. That's that's the challenge. That's what we're going for. We want to spread that love. Wow, okay, we have about seven minutes left. My goodness, maybe I could have rounded out Cedo. Uh, you know what? Maybe what we can do is we can jump back over because for those of you who missed maybe the codex section, we can show the codex one more time and I can also show you some engine colors and, and, and stuff for those of you who missed it last week because I think it's fun to show. So give me one second. I'll boot the game back up. We'll kind of top off a little bit more information it'll be it'll be fun it'll be nice so one second as i spool up the old engines to crank this bad boy back into the fray have just a tad more fun <clears throat> excuse me and in this process by the way ask any and all questions we'll just we'll have a nice little friendly chat we like to have a little bit of fun in these last minutes of the stream and you know you guys are incredibly important to us. Let's, let's just be straight clear about that. Very, very important to us. So game should be loading. Come on, load. There it is, excellent, beautiful, perfect. Wonderful timing. So I'm just gonna go through here and show some ships. You guys can keep asking questions. We'll have some conversation. But what I'm gonna be doing is just showing you some uh, engines on various ships, and then I'll show a little bit of the codex as well at a certain point. But I really enjoy these engines, these red, beautiful red engines. Ah, oh, gosh, it feels nice. It's one of my favorites, actually. There, the, also the laterals are also red. That might be a little too much, but you know, it's good. Mm. All right. And like, yeah, and like I said, I'm gonna go through a number of these. All of these I designed around the Everspace One skins. Yeah, I like that color scheme too. I was, I was happy with how I put that together. It was, it was nice. It was nice. So this one, this one's also kind of fun. And note, the cockpits are also unique here too. Like the first one, the cockpit was red, I believe. So now we got this one, oops. We got this one with the yellow cockpit on the front and just yellow boosters with the uh, little bit of blue just to round home that style, that theme. I guess I could also just like hide this since we're only looking at the visuals. That works kind of. Really comes together, I think. Nice little bit of added detail. Number two, so now we go to Sharon. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> Excuse me, goodness. We got like these almost cyan style thrusters as well. So not just the straight blue, but you've got those sort of alternating colors. And then we got the yellow here. So both of these colors are new. And we're also using white to kind of round out the lateral thrusters. So you're getting all three colors from the main design of the ship into the boosters 
into the laterals. There's a lot more that you can do to like bring your builds together instead of just looking at the exact same engine colors over and over now. The window, the, the window tints I think can also make a pretty big difference as well. Because right now, in the current game, the window tint color, I think it's just like that standard cyan. And uh, being able to customize that a little bit further, it can feel really nice. And I'm really hoping that like when we hit that 1.0, you guys are just going to go ham and share your creations. Because it's, it's so pure and good. And oh, I just, I love every bit of it. All right. So next one, this is one that we actually skipped last week, so I want to show it again. We showed it at the beginning of the stream, but we have ensured that there are some more daring colors, if you will. We're putting it into your hands because we trust you. <laughs> no, we, we want to have a lot of variety when it comes to the color choices that you can go for, that you can aim for. And it's no different when it comes to some of those uh, more brighter, more fluorescent style of colors. And it can bring some of your builds home. It can be really nice when it all gets paired together. So don't be shy, be brave. There's some cool stuff you can do. I got a couple more and then we're gonna <coughs> show the codex. Let's see, that was Belt of Grace. We got the skull, strawberry, banana. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. What's daring about lithium? Lithium flames are beautiful. Oh, thank you for that, Spoot Knight. Thank you so much. Our big fan of the way this dedicator looks, by the way. I am very pleased with these engines. Like, it just, it brings it home. Brings it home. Ah, oh. I like, I really am excited for this to get into your guys' hands. Like, I, it's, I know that you're gonna have so much fun and spending a bit of time just going after the engine colors and, oh really happy with how this has come together sincerely all right one more and then our time's pretty tight here but we're still going to do it anyway i'm going to show you the codex after this one just rounding everything off because i love you that's how it works this one is oh gosh i really like the way this one came out green Let's get in a shadowy area too. Let's just like really, really top this off. Just like, look, oh gosh. It's, ah! All right, this is, this is my favorite one. This is, did I say the last one was favorite one? I can't remember, but either way, I love how they all come together. It ju it's just, it's so good. And I, and like, even like whenever the thrusters are like, kind of like calming down. Look at that, even like the calm colors. Ah! Oh. Can you tell that we're excited to get this into your hands? Like, I, I hope that's clear. <laughs> Woo, I hope that's clear. It's, it's gonna be so great when you guys have this. Looking forward to it. So, all right. So that's the, that's all the engine and, and um, uh, window tint coloration stuff that I can show for now. We'll have more to show in the future, of course. Uh, but last but not least, we want to get back into this data tab and show you a little bit of this codex just one more time. We'll go ahead and go all the way down. Um, oh wait, not, not in the characters, it's in the world, it's separate. <clears throat> we'll go over to here to the hive because I think you guys were interested in seeing it. But there's a lot of different elements that are captured within the codex. Uh, factions, locations, and then various just information bytes on certain fragments of the world if you will like ships or um st just stuff just various things so here we have the the hive you can read about it here so good good stuff but we've made a lot of progress when it comes to uh how basically all of the codex has been brought together including having these delightful little imageries And of course, when you choose locations, you get like the background uh, components as well. Let's do uh, Colonial Fleet, for example. Some of you might recognize some of the concept art. Oh, this one's a big one. Look at that. Wow. 
look at that one. So there's lots and lots of information that you can procure from the codex now that adds so much more to your experience overall. Yeah, feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, so thanks for joining us in today's stream where we were able to show you a little bit more about the codex as well as a couple other little trinkets, I suppose, along the way. This is gonna continue to happen for all of you. We are continuing the save file and we're gonna cruise it all the way over to that 1.0 release. And that means if there is additions and improvements that are bound to the new game space that I'm applied to, you're gonna see it. We're not holding back. Well, maybe there's a couple things that we're holding back, but you're gonna see a lot. That's my point. So stick with us, hang out along for this ride, and we'll have so many more talking points and little trinkets for you to enjoy. I am confident of that. In the meantime, you guys seriously have been so awesome for all of these delightful questions, for joining our community contests, for just general community engagement, honestly. Uh, and I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games, giving you all the insight and information regarding Everspace 2, especially the lore. Don't stop being awesome. And we will catch you next week when you have your screenshots for the theme of love. Ah, it'll be super duper. I am confident of it. All right, toodles. What's up? How's it going? You know what? Last week, last week, we didn't have an after stream segment. How silly of me. How, how dare I? Uh, so yeah, as you guys know, my throat has not been in the best condition over the course of the last couple of weeks. And today is honestly no different. My, my throat kind of sucks. But I love you. <laughs> and because that's literally the theme for editing the next week, I'm going to, I'm gonna own this, all right? I don't know where this is gonna go. We're gonna try it, okay? So you ready for this? We're gonna have some fun with a little bit of beatboxing for all of you. Okay. <clears throat> where do we even start? Okay. Use my falsetto, but I think my throat will fall out. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you, everybody, for sticking around for this wonderful nonsense. Oh my gosh! Sincerely, I I enjoy you all so much, and I really appreciate all the love that you give us over here at Rockfish. All of your support, whatever that looks like, whether that's just talking about a game with a friend, or if it's from a financial position, just putting a little bit of money in our direction. Sincerely, thank you to all of you out there. It means a lot. 
And this is a perfect time to remind you all, anybody who is not familiar with this, that we will have Everspace 2's price increase before 1.0. In fact, it will land February 20th, specifically, when that price point will go up. So if you want to get the game at the lowest price point, now is the time to do so, okay? And there's a lot of reasons why that price point's going up. The short of it is that we've put a lot of time energy and effort into this title and it's very much deserving of this price point that we are aiming for i can assure you of that you want more information though you can always have a chat with michael he's also delivered some of this news over on the steam forums as well if you ever are curious about those sort of conversations though granted the steam forums can sometimes be a little crazy but i digress oh my goodness so february 20th purchase the game before then for a price uh, adjustment Otherwise, if you still are on the fence and you want to wait out for that 1.0, that's always an option. Either way, your support, even wishlisting us, is huge. It helps us get seen. It helps you show everyone else kind of what you are interested in and what you are looking towards. Uh, and the support's just been crazy. It's been so good. It's been so good. All right. That's all for now. Sincerely, don't stop being awesome. Like, I know I said it already, but you're amazing. Have a fantastic weekend. Uh, Geekbyte, if you wouldn't mind, let's send our Twitch audience over to Corbin. I think he's actually still playing uh, Dead Space. That's totally fine. That's great. That's great. It'll be a fun, fun old time. Uh, otherwise, Firing YouTubers. Oh, is he? Uh, I think he was playing Everspace 2 the last time I looked. Oh, oh, nice. All right. So more Everspace fun over on twitch.tv slash Corbin78. So YouTubers, if you have an interest in going over there, you can get some more Everspace action. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's... We are well over the stream limit, so I got to go. But great, fantastic weekend. Again, I love you all. Don't stop being awesome. And one more time, toodles!